weekend. Four day weekend. Well, no, three for me. Four for some of you. <laughs> Yay. I'm sitting here by the beehive because I thought you'd like to see all the activity that's going on back there. Wow, look at them go. They are really busy today. A lot of pollen coming in for the new babies, which is great. So uh, it's been rainy here, really, really rainy. But I thought I'd take an advantage in the break with a break in the rain right now. It's still pretty windy <laughs> to come out and show you the garden because all this rain and then little periods of sun, the garden's really popping. And so I want to take you around the garden and then I also want to start some seeds. It's time. I can't wait any longer. I must start the tomatoes and the peppers. I'm supposed to wait till March, but I can't. So I'm going to do it today. So we'll do that. Um, Next weekend when it's not so windy, I think we'll open the hive and take a look inside. I'm really anxious to see what's going on in there. It looks active and busy, but um, when it's a sunny day, that'll be a better time. Sunny, warm, not windy day, that'll be a better time to open the hive. So maybe next weekend we'll do that. But this weekend, let's go check out the garden and let's go plant some seeds, shall we? Come on. Here we are in the south garden. Everything looks great here. There's chard to eat. I've seeded uh, turnips and radishes. They're all coming up and some romaine and the garlic's doing well and the onions. And this is that um, cover crop I planted, the clover, crimson clover. So after that blooms, I'll cut it down. But meanwhile, it's providing nitrogen to all of the beds. Nitrogen, what did I just say? And I have to show you the most beautiful pea blossoms I've ever seen. And these are not sweet peas, folks. These are shelling peas. Can you stand it? Are they not? The prettiest little blossoms you've ever seen. I think their saber is the kind that I planted here. I just think they're so beautiful. Anyway, that's kind of fun, so I wanted to show you that. There's some baby strawberries coming out. Oh, yeah, cilantro, lots of cilantro coming up. All right, some star flowers. Okay, let's go look on the other side at the North Garden. Oh, I wanted to show you these blueberries. Look at these. Look at all the flowers on the blueberries. We are gonna have such a great blueberry crop this year. I really, I can't wait. These flowers are so interesting. Let me see if I can, can you see in there? Really beautiful. So we're gonna have a great crop of blueberries. That is very exciting. And uh, over here, things are really starting to go too. This is exciting, exciting over here. So the first thing I know you'll wanna know, have the carrots germinated? Are we gonna have carrots? And folks, I'm here to tell you, it's happening. It's happening, there's, there's, there's green stuff coming up all over here. Carrots, 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 and lettuce coming up in the next bed, and potatoes. And these are brazen greens, and there's some kohlrabi starting. Brazen greens, brazen greens, kale, spinach. And then I gotta show you, this has been a really neat invention. So when I transplanted the seedlings of the brassicas into these little solo cups, I just turned them upside down to protect the seedlings because seedlings were getting eaten like that. And this has really been great. It keeps the humidity in. It's been great. I've done it with the broccoli, the cabbage, and that's really helping. There's not a lot of flowers yet. There's a few. I can't remember what these are. Aren't those sweet? And then there's some um, forget-me-nots. And the borage is going to go anytime. The borage is going to start blooming. Okay, so that's the state of the garden. Chickens are fine. They're really laying eggs again. Everything out here is looking really good for this time of year. So let's start some seeds. What did you just take out of the refrigerator? Well, we took out the country ham. It's uh, time to, uh, it's been in the refrigerator for about 60 days. And so now it's time to take it out of its butcher paper and rinse and wash off, rub off some of the cure uh, and put it in a new ham sock and hang it up. Uh, I think we're going to hang it up over at Elizabeth's folks up in their uh, out, outside shed. Redwood House. In the Redwood House. Where is the ham? Can you show us? Uh, sure. Come on over this way. It's not unwrapped though yet. No, not yet. Not yet. But here it is. Uh, and so it's pretty Gosh, it's hard as a rock. It's pretty hard. Well, that's you know what, kind of what ha what does that? Well, How does that happen? Well, it, it's um, I don't have a scale that's rated high enough to 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 uh, 
Our kitchen scale maxes out at about 15 pounds, I think, and this is more uh, like 25, 30 pounds. Um, is it and just so that it's lost water? It's so lost it's a whole hard. bunch of water, so it's it's hard. Right. Also, it's been in the you know the refrigerator, so it kind of you know firms up there hmm. naturally. This is that lovely painter's tape. Yep, yep, yep. And this yep. is the ham sock. I'm and that's talking. the ham sock. And so we're going to take this thing off and unwrap all the butcher paper and see what's going cool. on inside. Cool. I have a lot of seeds. Um, I I don't know if I can plant all of these. Okay, this tray is full of this the moistened soil soilless soil mix so the seed starting mix is sterile it usually has uh, equal parts like vermiculite or perlite either peat or coconut core and usually something like I don't know earthworm castings what does this one have mostly peat not a huge fan of peat oh some limestone uh, okay so now I'm gonna put a little divot in each one of these and now I'm gonna put one seed in each one now you could do more than one but I'm gonna do one in each one and the most important thing is to mark them break Tom's unwrapped the ham let's unwrapped go see it. it I've unwrapped it and here it is the white oh. so there's still a little salt on the outside here but a lot of it is but a lot but um, we'll have to go back to the pictures that we had when we first did well, this. well it was covered and it was covered uh, and you can see still it's like rock hard and you can see kind right. of you know how much how much this how much this is all kind of retracted here Oh, uh, so that's kind of interesting. That's the bat layer and skin yeah, layer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's meat. all. And look how red the meat is. Yeah. Good grief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, huh. this okay. is interesting. I mean, it's all it's all a big experiment here. It's time for wood chips again. So we had a pile delivered. This is probably about, oh, how big is this pile? This is probably 10 or 15. This is probably 12 cubic yards. How's that for an estimate? And I wanted to show you can you see what's coming off it? Can you see the steam? This pile is cooking. It is simply cooking. Look at that. So we're gonna let it sit here for a couple days and then we're gonna start with the wheelbarrow. Uh, and then we need to get a pile of compost to uh, top off the beds. So this is our spring workout almost every spring. Well, I've got everything planted, everything that I had. And in this tray of 72, there are eight peppers, two of each of everything, but eight peppers, so 16 peppers. And then the rest are tomatoes. Some I've grown before, some I've never grown before. So it'll be interesting to see um, how these do. Now I fit all of these in one tray, two of each in one tray. If I feel the need to, in another two weeks, I can plant a whole nother batch and um, at the proper time, in the beginning of March, and see how they do. Meanwhile, I have some ideas about what to do with the extras. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit, and let's talk about seed. You know, you don't have to plant everything from seed. You could just go to your local nursery, a reputable nursery, nursery not like, not one of those big box stores but a reputable nursery and you could buy all of your vegetables from starts rather than from seed, starting them from seed. Or you could go to your local farmer's market and I bet there's somebody there who's selling seedlings for cheapo prices. And they're just like me, they've just been starting all their own seeds. I mean, that would probably be your best bet. Or you could contact your local Master Gardener program and I bet they have a sale that you could go to. Totally worth it. All of that money goes to something like a homeless program. So you don't have to start things from seed. It's just that 
the, the nice part about it is, is that you have some control over it. You have some control over the process from the very beginning to the time that you compost the plant at the very end of its life after it's provided you with a ton of food. And that really appealed to me. Uh, and also the idea that I could plant a bunch of different varieties and try new kinds of tomatoes all the time or, or broccoli or whatever. And that's exciting. My num it's dangerous because your number of plants like doubles every year because you start to find all these different things that you want to try to plant. So I guess there's a good side to it and a bad side to it. But if you really want to try things that you can't find, the way to do it is to is to start from seeds. So you can go either way. Uh, seeds are kind of miraculous. Um, they hold everything in them that they need to become huge productive plants. That's cool. That's that's really cool. And so there's that miracle thing going on with seeds. Now there are some seeds that you want to plant in place like peas, lettuces mostly. You could transplant lettuces, but why? So there's some things you plant right in place and you'll just need to you'll just need to look at the seed packet and see what it says to do. A lot of flower seeds I just throw in the yard and see what happens. But I think it's really rewarding to start a lot of vegetables from seed indoors and then transplant them. Although it is more work. Now, I have a lot of seed left over and I could save it. I could put it in the refrigerator like I do every year. Or I'm really thinking about starting, I'd really like to start like a neighborhood seed swap uh, and, and see see if we could get some like-minded neighbors together and all of us trade seeds that we have left over. For instance, I totally forgot to buy or save jalapeno seed. So I'm going to need some of that. So what if I said to somebody, hey, I've got calabrese peppers. Uh, I'll swap you some of those for some of your jalapenos. And that way we all uh, form a community of, of people who are interested in the same things. Or maybe I should start a seed library. We don't have one in my area. I don't really know how those work, but I think I'm going to really dedicate some time this week to figuring all of that out. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do with the leftover seed. Now, um, I guess that's it for this week. Uh, time goes fast. The sun's coming out a little, which is really cool. So I might keep working, but I'm so grateful that you stopped by and watched our video. I hope that you're having some peaks of sun wherever you are and uh, promises of spring. I hope you're outdoors and enjoying it. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next week where I think we're going to talk about bees. See you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.